Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome to Python for Ethical Hacking. Now, uh, again, this is a series that we took a look at, um, you know, quite a while ago and a lot of you guys have been asking me to continue it and to actually just refine it a little bit. So I decided uh, that I would go through the most important things that you need to know as a penetration tester uh, with Python. All right, so uh, in the previous videos, we looked at the basics of Python and then we built a few simple scripts like an FTP brute brute forcer, uh, but that really wasn't very powerful. Uh, as I mentioned, those set of videos were an introduction into building scripts and scanners with Python. Now, uh, in this series, we're going to be, uh, what we're going to be focusing on are the most important things that a, a penetration tester must know and uh, uh of course, essential uh, to know, especially when you're talking about Python. So we'll be looking at uh, network sockets, all right? So that means, uh, you know, creating a TCP client, TCP servers, and UDP, uh, UDP clients and servers, all right? So those are probably the most important things that you should know. We'll then move at, uh, we'll then move to finally uh, building a netcat alternative, which is usually the the exercise that uh, I really recommend people to do is to build a netcat uh, alternative or not really a clone add functionality of your own. So we'll be focusing on that. But in the middle, I'll be explaining about sockets and uh, and networking with uh, Python. Now, after that, we'll be then looking at building our own custom scripts. But again, I am not going to be, you know, building scripts and then you can copy off them because that's not how you learn. So I'll be encouraging you guys to build your own scripts and then submit them to me. And then I'll be showcasing them on the website so that you, your script can also be featured if they're good enough. That being said, uh, let's get on with the series. This is the first video and this video is just uh, uh, going to act as an introduction, uh, you know, for the new changes that are made. And then finally, well, uh, I'm going to show you the environment that I've set up. So I've given you an introduction and the, the penetration testing environment that I'm going to be using for this series is Kali Linux. Okay. You can work on any other distribution. It, it all depends on you. So I have Python and Python 3 installed. We'll be focusing on both of them because I want to really show you how you can alternate from both and how you can create an application that is easily changed into the other language or is easily uh, convertible into the other language. All right, so we'll also be looking at that. Now, I'll also be covering the advanced stuff of Python that I did not cover, like objects uh, and object, uh, and uh, we'll be looking at functions more in depth. So, you know, stuff that we didn't take a, a look at. So in the previous series, we looked at uh, the uh, integrated development environment, uh, PyCharm, but many of you complained that it was too heavy for your system or it's not really what you would call an agile development environment, especially for the purpose in which you are using. So I've been using Visual Studio Code for a long time now. Now, if you don't know what Visual Studio Code is, uh, let me just tell you something. You need to know what it is because I've been using it now for web development, for scripts, PHP, and obviously now Python. I've tried it with Python and it works awesome. And the best part is it's lightweight and you can install it extremely easily on Windows and Linux. Uh, that's why you can see I have it uh, running here on Kali Linux. Okay, so I'll post the link in the description where you can check it out. It's code.visualstudio.com and it works on Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, and obviously Windows if you're running that. Uh, so just download it. It's about 50 megabytes. And uh, for Kali Linux, make sure you download the Debian package. So you can see I have the Debian package here. And to get it installed, I'm going to open up my terminal here. And uh, sorry about that. I've just started a new virtual machine with Kali. So my font might be a, a, a bit small. So what I can do here is uh, if, uh, in fact, uh, I'm just going to show you how to get it installed. I'll probably zoom this in when I'm editing the video. All right, so um, if I list the files in here, you can see that uh, I've already given it permissions to be executed. So you can use the uh, the ch mod or the uh, yeah the ch mod permissions to to ex uh, to make it uh, executable. And then finally, you can use the dpkg, the Debian package uh, package manager. Uh, so dpkg i and you use the uh, the name of the Debian package, and you just hit enter, and it's going to install it for you. So I already have it installed. And uh, once you have it installed, you now need to install the Python, uh, the Python extension, which you can find here in the extension, uh, the extension section. And it's going to be the first one. Or if you don't get it, just search for Python. Now, during the course, I'll be telling you to install the other ones that I like that are not really specific for Python, but will make your development environment really better. So just click on Python. It is developed by Microsoft. 
so you can install it and uh, you can you then need to reload your uh, your environment so I'm, I'm gonna do that as well and uh, once it's reloaded you should be good to start using Python all right so you can see linting debugging and multi-threaded support awesome so this is our development environment so that's going to be the introduction video for this series. Shortly after this, we're going to get started with networking and sockets. So I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.